Good morning, everyone. My name is Carl Carpenter with uh, Rackus Consulting. Today we're going to talk about OSINT, Open Source Intelligence. Um, before I begin, uh, everything relating to this video is going to be for your educational purposes only. Uh, anything you do as a result of this video, which shouldn't be anything bad, is entirely your responsibility. And you're uh, going, you would be accountable for it if you use uh, information in the wrong way. Um, today, um, I had to pick a target that was not, I didn't want to pick a human target. I wanted to pick a business because I didn't want anybody to possibly violate or view the, that there was a privacy rights violation. Uh, I, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. All right. So what is OSINT? OSINT stands for Open Source Intelligence, and it's essentially the process of just doing research on a person or an entity like a business or whatever to gather intelligence or information about that person or, or entity um, and it could be for a variety of reasons maybe you want to find out the the health of the business the you know, want to find out a little bit more about the business owner or maybe you want to uh, you know find information about someone for potential social engineering or penetration testing reasons. There could be a variety of reasons. OSINT is very commonly used across uh, both uh, legitimate uh, businesses and entities, as well as illegitimate uh, entities and human beings like uh, bad actors, uh, hostile parties, things like that. It's, uh, it's really just how you put it all together that makes OSINT um, a force multiplier or something that can help you. It's also common for OSINT to be used in relation to criminals, um, you know, to break into somebody's house. I mean, there's lots of people that will post on Facebook, oh, I'm looking so forward to this 10th anniversary. We're going to go on a four-week cruise to Tahiti and other places or wherever. But what you're really doing when you say stuff like that on Facebook or wherever is that uh, I'm going to be gone for four weeks probably somebody's not going to be there for four weeks and come rob me. Uh, that's, that's pretty much what a criminal views in relation to uh, OSINT. So um, there could be other reasons. So let's say somebody wants to fish a company, uh, send phishing emails, or maybe try to commit CEO fraud. There could be, you know, examples of that. I mean, I, I, I'm sure that by now everybody's had an email or a Facebook message where their friend was stuck in uh, some foreign country with no wallet, no passport, and needed money wired immediately. Well, how did they know to contact you in relation to your friend being stuck in wherever? Um, probably a Facebook account got hacked, but they were using OSINT to help undercover or uncover <clears throat> who, uh, who they could possibly reach out to to, to you know, get them to send some money. All right, so again, before we go into this, uh, again, educational purposes only. The process is the same. We're not going to go into too much detail on how to do it. If you understand the process and the very minimal detail that we provide in this video, then you've understood the process. There are tools out there that, uh, that do this. However, probably the number one tool across the board is going to be Google. Uh, another good tool is Maltigo. Uh, you can get a free a free license on Maltigo for a uh, you know home use, personal use, um, but you can also pay for it. There's more tools if you pay for it. Again, everything we do is in this video is going to be for educational purposes only. You're responsible for your actions. I also want to point out that there's numerous other locations on the internet that will show you this exact same material or possibly other material. Um, there's all sorts of all sorts of options on that. All right, so how is OSINT performed? Well, first off, you're going to use Google a lot. I've said that probably four times now and see what uh, you can find out. So first, we're going to need a target. And again, as I indicated earlier, I'm not going to be uh, picking on a human being per se. I'm going to pick on a company that I've never met before. So I've already preloaded all this stuff. It took me about 10 minutes to come up with it. Um, here we are. Um, so what I did, I was watching a uh, TV show called, uh, gosh, Atlas of Cursed Places or something like that off of National Geographic. And they had a story about Port 
pleasant West Virginia where I will probably never go to. So because of that, because I will probably never go to it, I, uh, I've picked that location. I wanted to pick a business there. So uh, I did a Google search for uh, Port Pleasant, West Virginia businesses. This slide came up. And by the way, you're going to document everything. I've pre-documented it in Excel, but you can use Excel, Word, again, Maltigo if you want. But um, I've pre-documented it just to save time. So I did a Google search for Port Pleasant, West Virginia businesses. I uh, looked at this one. I went to, saw this Main Street. That looks kind of interesting. So I uh, right-click, always open new tabs. Don't click and, uh, and just kind of have to back, you know, go back a lot. So <clears throat> click that and uh, came up to this right here. Um, so, uh, so I've documented Port Pleasant, uh, West Virginia, and then I went to this website right here. The first one is Bear Wallow Barbecue. Now I happen to be an awesome lover of barbecue. Can't get enough of it. So obviously that's going to be the target, Bear Wallow Barbecue. Got a cool name, by the way. So I expanded that. Now, first off, you know, we're gathering information right on this company. So we have a Facebook, an address, and a phone number. So document Facebook address, phone number right here. And, um, you know, then for each one, I'm going to open up a new tab. So here's Bear Wallow uh, Barbecue. Here's the address. You can see the, the, the little dot. Oh, there's Mothman Museum. That was actually in that episode I was watching on uh, National Geographic um, and so on. So we have the Facebook profile right here. We have some pictures and we have the address. Well, that's that's cool and all. So we've we've uh, documented all that. All right. Now let's go back to using Google as our friend. Let's go to Google and do Bear Wallow Barbecue. Look at all these different things that start popping up. So we, we've already got this Facebook profile going, Instagram, Yelp, restaurant, so on. <clears throat> so let's start opening those up and we're going to document them as we do it. So we got the Instagram. Okay, same logo as the Facebook profile. This picture right here is the same picture right there. So we're pretty confident that this is the same entity. Um, going over to Going over to, um, what is that, Yelp, uh, Bear Wallow Barbecue, same geographical location. But now we have some little bit more information, like this uh, is being reported as closed. Well, why is that? That's, that's a good question. But we are documenting all these things on our Excel spreadsheet. All right, then we can go to uh, this one, Restaurant Guru. Looks like a good place. Uh, we have a nighttime view. So if we were performing surveillance on Bear Wallow or maybe a, per or a person who attended Bear Wallow, like a guest or whatever, you know, we have possible surveillance points over here. And if we go back, you can see that same thing. Here's another picture that sh gives some other ideas for geographical surveillance. We could also use satellite mode on Google Maps to come up with some ideas on surveillance. If we were surveilling, that is I'm not saying you should. All right, so here's uh, Restaurant Guru. Uh, nothing really good there. Let's see what we have here. Just a bunch of pictures of food. Well, I'm really hungry right now. So we also, uh, as a part of this second Google search, we came down to this, the business. So let's go to the business. And again, we're documenting everything. So this is the West Virginia Secretary of State. Here's the link for that right there. Um, you know, we're looking at, uh, this is the county they're in, Mason. So if we want to look further, we could maybe see if there's any sort of county websites that we could look things up. Oh, look at this. It's an LLC, Limited Liability Company. So now we know the structure of the company. And right here, member managed. So that's, again, an indication of an LLC. But right over here, why, were, why was it closed? Well, look at this. Revoked. Failure to file annual report. Now the question is, is why did they fail to file the annual report? So just another thing to ask yourself. Further down, look at that. We have this uh, 166 Aniston Drive, Point Pleasant, West Virginia. So that's that could be um, 
interesting. Let's copy that and do another uh, new tab to the right. We'll just do maps.google.com. Let's punch that in. Uh, enter. So now we have a, uh, a, G, a Google map of of uh, the location. And if we zoom in, we have one, two, three, four houses. So this is the fourth house. So if we were to click over to satellite view, let's just duplicate that tab. Uh, duplicate. And click over to satellite. So now if we zoom in a little bit more, there's the fourth house. Now, now we're picking up more open source intelligence. We have two cars. Uh, right in there, two white cars. One looks like an SUV. Yeah, it looks like an SUV or maybe one of those boxy cars. This is a sedan, obviously. So we could even go further. Let's duplicate this tab. <clears throat> we can go here. Now we have a street level view. Let's validate to make sure that this is the right house. There's one, two, three, and this is the fourth house. Look at that. We also got a for sale sign, some stuff left out. So just looking at this, we have a tricycle, a little mini kiddie pool, barbecue thing. So maybe they have kids, maybe they don't, who knows. But the car is different. So we're basically documenting all of this. So going back to the West Virginia Secretary of State, we have uh, Ashley Kaler as a, as a recipient and Adam Kaler as a recipient. And they both have the same address. So now, <clears throat> and I intentionally picked these guys because I know that they don't live there anymore. Um, but uh, now we have the address that both of these people lived at and we have the geographical location as well as satellite view and the you know in-person view. Oh well, there's the uh, look at the Google truck. Uh, yeah right there. All right so going back to uh, another bit of a search in here we have the open corporate. So let's go to that similar information that we saw in the secretary of state video uh pretty pretty easy to figure out um we have the names and we have the uh we have adam and ashley here sorry i had to pause for a little bit because i was my cat is attacking me um <clears throat> same address so we're val validating that um, so let's click on Adam and Ashley here let's see what we got Adam so all right nothing really special we got another Adam but that's guys in South Carolina probably not him here's Bear Wallow right there West Virginia nothing really good here so what is what does Adam look like we don't really know so if we go back to his Facebook uh, page we have all these pictures and then opening one up right here, look, it says probably supporting Adam. That's Adam right there. Now, how do we know that's really Adam? Well, if we go back to uh, our Facebook page, scroll down a little bit. <clears throat> Let's look at this one. That looks like that guy. Look at that. Dylan and Adam. So now we have a picture of what this guy looks like, uh, Adam. Well, what does Ashley you know, if we click on her name, what does she look like? We go here, look at that, Natasha and Ashley. So now we know what Ashley looks like. Now, if we look further into Ashley, uh, we have this one, Ashley Kaler, Wide Eye Paintball, West Virginia. So that's probably her, but how do we know for sure? Well, let's go into Wide Eye Paintball. And again, we're writing all this stuff down. Um, go into Wide Eye Paintball, looks like Ashley. Uh, 2007, 2019. Here's an interesting thing, Red Lodge, Montana, right there. So if we look into that and go back to to this, uh, their, their, their website, there's a picture of Ashley and, and Adam. If we click on that picture, look at this. They have moved, decided to move to Red Lodge, Montana. So now we validated that Ashley is a part of Bear Wallow, as well as <clears throat> uh, Wide Eye Paintball. So, 
wide eye paintball. You should be wearing goggles if you're going to be paintballing. Otherwise, you won't have any wide eyes at all, at least twice. <laughs> so now we have an understanding that they've since moved from West Virginia. They're now in, in uh, Montana uh, at, near in Red Lodge. Uh, and that uh, this is all public information. This is what they've you know put out on themselves. But they're also indicating why they moved. So it's not like the business failed in Bear Wallow. Uh, Bear Wallow Barbecue business failed. It's not like they did that. They made a medical and a business decision to simply leave West Virginia and go to Red Lodge, Montana. So that's uh, that's good. Now, uh, again, uh, I, I picked this particular target as an example because I didn't want to uh, pick on a business. Or I'm sorry, I didn't want to pick on a human being and uncover some possibly sensitive information that could put them at risk uh, or release private information. Uh, but having said that, everything you see here is all public knowledge. I've never met Adam or Ashley or their two fine children. Um, I've, I've never been to Red Lodge, Montana. I, although it looks like they've opening up a business here at the called the Red Box Car. So I highly encourage everybody to go by there, get some food. Uh, just looking at the pictures that uh, Adam was uh, showing in relation to barbecue, it's got to be good. And good food is a good reason to go visit. <laughs> Anyways, oh, you can't see that part. So let me scroll. This is the red box car right here. And then uh, Red Lodge, Montana is right there. So... Anyways, and with that, again, uh, everything in this uh, video is for educational purposes only. If you understand the process of what I just did, you could figure it out on how to do it on anyone. Um, it's not hard at all. Um, and unfortunately, there can be criminal intent behind it. But with that, I thank everyone for your time and, uh, and everything else. Feel free to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And again, if you're in Red Lodge, Montana, why don't you go by and visit the Red Box car and order some food and help Adam and Ashley out. All right, and with that, thank you very much, everyone. I will talk to you later. See ya!